scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Before you believe a man, find out about him. The Bible says that we should minister according to the measure of grace. That means it is sin to declare a thing that is outside of the jurisdiction of the possibility of your grace. Hallelujah. Believe me when I tell you your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. I know that tonight will be a defining moment for someone. There is always a moment in a man's life where you will encounter the grace that will take you to the dimensions that have only been prophesied. It is up to us to be discerning to know. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. So I, I, I wanted to be very sensitive while Apostle Danjuma was ministering you know, I was only praying in my heart that we were discerning enough to not only discern the distribution of the graces, but the things that the Spirit of God is doing. Tonight's meeting is not for global flames. Tonight's meeting is for Plateau State. Yeah. Hear me, let me say it again. Tonight's meeting is not for global flames. Tonight's meeting is for the city. Yeah. Hallelujah. Please, wherever you are in one minute, lift up a cry. Lord, turn my life around tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray, Father, the anointing, the illumination, the grace that I must receive tonight to turn my life around, my ministry around. With meekness, I receive. Is someone pray. Please pray It's part of the meeting My heart is open, oh God The seeing eyes and the hearing ears
sustains the ability to reveal Christ you are the one who heals you are the one who delivers you are the one who can transform tonight we submit to your wisdom tonight we pray that you will not only invade this blessed ministry but the city upon the plateau will experience such a dimension of the spirit right now uh, shortly please keep standing i just want you to hold the people who will begin to run out right now 11 people there is a strong anointing the lord is bringing speed to their lives physically they will begin to run out by the spirit as i'm speaking just bring them out and help them 11 people as i'm speaking right now is a grace the bible says and the hand of god please bring them out we'll sit down shortly came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. Please bring them out very quickly. You will never be the same. The Lord is shifting you. Eleven people, this is what I see in the spirit. You will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life will change You will never be the same You've touched His grace Hi-ya, hi Hi-ya, hi Yeah Hi-ya, hi His grace, your life will change. You will never be the same. You touch His grace, your life must prophesy to yourself. I will never be the same. I've touched your grace, my life must change. I will never be the same. There are things that only happen in the house of God Cannot happen in a lecture room Cannot happen in a bank Jacob said Surely the Lord was in this place He says this is the house of God The gate of heaven Listen, let me tell you the name of the Lord. Except Jesus is not Lord. That everything that followed you here tonight that is not of the Christ, it must leave you here this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. Please sit down if you can. 
just just two instructions and then please i want you to be sensitive i started seeing this right before i came that there is a very strange impartation of the spirit an impartation is a transference of possibilities it's not just an anointing with oil i want you to pay attention especially for those of us who are in the ministry conferences like this are so designed to allow the distribution of spiritual possibilities so that we can now host what we did not come with for those of you in front here i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i decree and declare from tonight I shift you by the spirit step into a new level of speed right now all of you in front I stand by the road let the embargo like Apostle Danjuma was saying that ties men down let it be lifted in the name of Jesus and so we decree lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors. Please sit down. I love this ministry because of the flexibility and the openness to the things of the spirit oftentimes the holy spirit is limited by our religion limited by our philosophy our education these things are important but let me tell you this when you come before god it is important for you to understand that we must be flexible enough to allow the spirit of the living god to bless to lift, to change, to transform. Hallelujah. Bring the two ladies from the choir. The Lord is saying it's a new season. An anointing, two of them. Not all of you, just two ladies. Their hand of God is coming on them. In the choir, two of them. It's a new season for you. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. We give you the highest, the highest praise to the King. We give you the loudest, the loudest praise to the King. We lift up holy hands, the highest praise to the King. We lift up holy hands. Worship, worship the highest praise to the King. You have taken all the glory, you have taken all the worship, you have taken all the sorrows, you have taken all the pain, you have made them yours. Praise to the King. Ephesians chapter 3. Thank you again, sir, for the opportunity. May the Lord bless you. I think we should take it from where, where the man of God started. Since he started it, then we'll take it from there. Yesterday, we began to discuss the platforms that are available for the believer to reveal the Christ. 
Are we together now? And number one, we said that the first platform provided for by which the saints can know God is scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise on which is able to make you wise on to has been so revealed that the nation of Israel captured God and his dealings in names and that every name of God represented a dimension of possibility that was contained in God number three we said the third platform to know God was through the revelation of the person the man Christ are we together yes the Bible calls him the express image of God the image of the invisible God. It says God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets. He said hath in these last days spoken to us through his son whom he hath appointed to be heir of all things. Who being the brightness of his image the Bible says that he upholds all things by the word of his power. So the revelation of Jesus I told us that until Jesus came, many people did not know who God was because he was invisible. They only depended on the revelation of the prophets and their perspectives. So when Jesus came, he came as a standard. He came as a correction of our perceptions about God. So that everything we saw in Jesus, the Christ, that was all that was in God. He was a revelation of the character of God. And then we rounded up yesterday by revealing that the fourth platform that allows the saints to know God is our experiences. It is true that in the kingdom we not only believe by faith alone, we can taste and see that the Lord is good. There is an experience to see that the Lord is good. There is an experience to our dealings with God. Hallelujah. It says that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled of the word of life. This, these, are, these are experiences. It was Habakkuk that says, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. Just, just allow them, when they are done, they can stand up and walk away. We bring them out like this because whilst the service is going on, there's something God is doing in them. There's something God is birthing. There's something God is bringing into them. I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower and I will see what the Lord will say unto me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And tonight, very quickly, I just want to take on one of the aspects. The revelation of Jesus Christ through the last platform that I will be teaching called the church. That the church is also a platform mandated to reveal Christ. There is a dimension of the unveiling of the Christ that can only be made possible through his ecclesia, the church. Please pay attention. This is very powerful. Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 9 and 10. Ephesians chapter 3. Just like the man of God began to share theologically speaking, the city of Ephesus was a city that was saddled with a lot of witchcraft and activities of necromancers and so on and so forth. It was a city that was under siege, under a princess, a, a, a witch called Diana. Hallelujah. So when Paul came there, he was not talking to a people who were naive spiritually. These were people who had been accustomed to spiritual things. It's theologically stated that it was at Ephesus that Paul manifested the zenith of his apostolic ministry. The construction of his discourse was that which was from both an intellectual standpoint and then an apostolic standpoint. The hallmark of his office was demonstrated in Ephesus. Are we together? Chapter 3, please. And then verse 9. 
Paul began to teach, if you start from verse 1 of chapter 3, he began to give us the basis of his discourse so that we would not credit him for pride. Paul began to speak. He said, look, by revelation, I was granted access to this mystery so that when you read my writings, you will understand the basis of my speakings. was given this grace the fortitude to create illumination in a hearer regardless of educational background regardless of level of orient your level of orientation that when you sustain that grace whoever comes under the influence of your communication is compelled to comprehend the things that you are saying it's a grace that can make men but that's not where i'm going to it says to see the fellowship which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Christ Jesus. Go to verse 10, please. To the intent, all of these revelations that were given to Paul was to this intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the, help me please, by the, not by angels, not by spirits, to be known by the church the manifold multifaceted wisdom of god there is a dimension of the revelation of the christ that has been mandated to be revealed by his ecclesia the church now to begin my discussion tonight i must share with us what we call the law of territory there is a law called the law of territory please look up that means that every territory has its rules for habitation are we together now the realm of the spirit as a spiritual atmosphere has its requirement if you must survive there the earth realm as a territory also has its rules for habitation and it so happens that the law of territory for earth is that you must have a body to be legitimate here are we together now that means if you do not sustain a material body that is built from the elements of that ecosystem you are illegal just just follow me are we together so every body or every spirit that is allowed within this domain must qualify by sustaining a material body that was made from the elements compatible with that ecosystem that means the elements of nature should not be antagonistic to your body if the elements fight you they are being manipulated by powers that be because you were built in in resonance to all of them the trees and the plants should not kill you so when food kills you there is a spirit manipulating it because it was designed to be compatible with your makeup are we two together please the law of territory that anything that does not have a material body cannot function in the earth now follow me the bible tells us in revelations that there was war in heaven are we together and it was the war i explained to us yesterday the judgment of lucifer that old serpent the devil he was casted from heaven and there was no more place for him he was looming around the horizon but could not find expression here because he did not pass through that law of having a body. Humans are not the only inhabitants within this domain of God's kingdom but we are the only authorized inhabitants because our spirits are hosted in a material body. Are we together now? It is because of this reason that demons search for bodies. It is why when demons leave a body, they become uncomfortable. The realm fights them. They are not at ease until they find another body. They can make... So John, the apostle, is teaching us in chapter 1. 
He says, in the beginning was the word, the logos of God, the thoughts of God. He says, and the word was with God and the word was God. And so when the discourse about the redemption of man was going on, there was a problem because even the Christ who was seated as the word could not come to the earth without a body. Are we together now? And so a strategy had to be invented to give that word, that spirit, a body so that he would now be a legal inhabitant in the earth. And so he had to search around to look for a woman who would partner with the Holy Spirit in creating a body. He said, a body has thou prepared. A body was prepared to be able to host that spirit. Are we together now? Please follow me. There is a reason why I am sharing this. If you do not understand this, you cannot understand the body of Christ. It's a mystery. One morning, a young virgin, minding her own business, and an angel appears to her and calls her highly favored. And then tells her that she's about to be with child without a man. And Mary said, how shall these things be seen that I know not a man? And then the angel, Gabriel, began to explain to her that the Holy Spirit can do something within her that will supplement for the role of a man. And she should not be shocked when her stomach begins to protrude. Long story short, this woman is pregnant. And then she gives birth to a tiny child. It's only men that called him a baby. Demons were afraid because they, they knew what they were saying. It was only a young body, but the spirit there belonged to the ancient of days. Watch this. Jesus at age 12 is carrying that body in disguise because he had to be human. You cannot die for men until you taste of what it means to be a man. The Bible says he was in every way tempted like us. And so at age 12, he's in the temple learning about himself under the mentorship of the rabbis. Are we together now? And then for 18 years, we do not hear about Jesus again. He is absent for 18 years. The next time we see him, he's age 30. He's coming to participate in the ministry of one who came in the spirit and the power of Elijah called John. John was not a prophet. John was not a Baptist. Baptism was a strategy to identify the Christ. That was why it stopped when Jesus was identified. When he was being trained in the wilderness, he was given a secret. Trained in the wilderness, he was given a secret code. Power of Elijah. John was a witness. But it so happened that the anointing he was carrying was that of a prophet. So he had to see. And when John sees Jesus, he says, behold the lamb. He didn't say, behold a young man. He didn't say, behold an adult. John was seeing through the eyes of Elijah. Because every time the move of God is about to come, the Bible says, whenever God is about to be revealed, Elijah must come first. It's a spiritual protocol for revival. Every time the move of God must come, the spirit of Elijah must also come first. So now here we see Elijah who comes as a foreigner disguised in the body of a young prophet. Be careful what is hiding in human bodies. Let me repeat myself. Be careful the mantles, the graces that are hidden in human bodies. So Paul said, no we no man after the flesh. That we discern men. The bodies may be young. The bodies may be frail. But God stores his possibilities. In human bodies. Are we still together? John looks at Jesus. And says I am not worthy. To untie even the latchets of your shoes. 
Jesus replies by saying, Suffer it to be so, so that all scripture would be fulfilled. Listen, Jesus is dipped in water, and as soon as he caught, the Bible records that, and the heavens opened. Then the Father speaks over him and says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And he compels creation to hear him. Are we together now? When Jesus meets with demons, they look at him and they do not see a 33-year-old body. They said, the madman in Gadara, you have come to destroy us. Is this not the ancient of days? Hiding and Jesus said, keep quiet. Be silent. That means the ancient of days had to go through that law of territory to carry a body. Please listen quietly. And then it gave him access. Now, Jesus is about to return to heaven. And the strange thing is he went with his body. That means there is a problem here. Because it means that his program is under threat. The program needs a body. Remember our discussion. That without a body, it is illegal for a spirit to function. So now, principalities and powers, I'm explaining this scripture are watching a physical body levitate to heaven and now they are surprised what is the mystery behind you returning with your body being coronated at the right hand of the father which other body will you use he said keep watching just give me 10 more days keep watching there were a group of people in a place called the there were a group of people in According to James 2 and verse 26, that when a body does not have a spirit, it is dead. So there were dead men in that upper room waiting for the spirit of life to come and resurrect them like he did Jesus. Watch this. Jesus is seated at the right hand. There is a body now. And Satan did not understand that the death of Jesus was to mass produce bodies. The goal was not to hide the Christ in a body. The goal was to create a system of authorization where the Christ can be reproduced in as many bodies. This was the agenda from beginning. Satan descended it and entered into Cain to kill because you see, until our dispensation, we did not know that multiplication could happen by reproduction. There was never reproduction until Adam. There was creation. So in Satan's curriculum of understanding, he did not know that a man can meet with a woman and give birth to many children. So when he trapped Adam and Eve, he thought it was over. Then he sees a woman's stomach bulging. Then he sees another child and Satan says, I'm in trouble. It's the reason why he started searching for the career of the seed. And God confused him and said, the seed of the woman. Women don't carry seeds. Please sit down. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life will change. Listen. When Jesus went to hell and the legal claims of justice were fulfilled, when he resurrected, he no longer became the only begotten son. He became the first begotten of we, the brethren. Are we together now? So it's no longer he gave his one and only begotten son. It is now that he has brought by the spirit of glory. He's brought many sons into glory. Watch this. So there is a dimension of the revelation of Christ. That is no longer dependent on Jesus, the son, the word. But dependent on the church. This is what your man of God was trying to explain to you. 
Remember the Bible says in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. It says, and the seventh angel sounded the trumpet and there were voices in heaven saying that the kingdoms of this world, the cosmos, has become the kingdom of our God and we, his Christ. So our God and we, his Christ, and together now we shall reign because we are the body and he is the head. When the church was birthed, Christ was never called the body. He now became the head of that body. Are we together now? Yes. So there is a body. And the formation of that body started with a question. This is the question. Who do men say that I am? This is the discourse on the building of the body. And some said you are a liar. Some said you are one of the prophets. He said, okay, you've worked with me, but what is your verdict? Who do you say that I, the son of man, is? And Peter speaking, the son of man is. And Peter speaking by the Spirit. Build my ecclesia, my church, the body that I will now use as an extension of my possibilities. I will build it. The church was built. It was not just born. It was built. Built by an intelligence that is formidable. I will build it in a way and a manner that the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it. So now, there are bodies. See, let me tell you something. Come, my dear. When the devil tries to afflict this woman, for instance, and stop her from having a child what is he really fighting what is barrenness about is it really just to show that a woman cannot give birth no he is fighting more bodies because more bodies means that the program of god can continue so when a man of god heals a woman from it's not just a miracle it's honor to the agenda of god that you are providing a platform for more bodies so that the purposes of Christ would be fulfilled. A body has thou prepared for me. Without bodies, the purposes of God cannot come to pass. Listen. There is an understanding we have in the body of Christ that is very sincere but is wrong. And it's an understanding that ignores men and bodies in an attempt to exalt Christ. So sometimes we say it doesn't matter. We are not here to see a man. We are here to see God. And we are right. Once you say that as touching and describing the sovereignty of Christ, you are right. But when you say that as touching the program of God, you are wrong. Because God is crippled until he finds bodies. Now, bodies are so important that when Moses died, Satan also wanted to quickly use that body. So he can enter it and come back to life. As Moses too. A dead body was still useful for Satan. So the Bible says. That the temple of God is not our spirit. It says our body. Why is accident dangerous? Because there is a requisite level of health. That must be at work in your body. For your spirit to be able to stay there. And for the spirit of God to be able to stay there. When this body is deteriorated beyond certain limits, both your spirit and the spirit of God will have to exit it. We call it death. Are we together now? So when we minister the life and the power of God, it's an attempt to bring your body to a restored dimension to allow space for the purposes of God to be birthed. A body hast thou prepared for me. There is a dimension prepared for me there is a dimension of the purify itself so an object will create something out of itself 
the excellency of what it creates is how that object is glorified glorified through its image are we together now the sun cannot glorify itself it is the power of the sun as displayed through the moon that shows you how great the sun is so the father cannot glorify himself so he vests his glory on the son the excellency of the son is how the father is glorified the son cannot glorify himself so he invests his grace upon the church in partnership with the holy ghost the excellency of the church is how the son is glorified now the dominion of the church over creation is how the church is glorified so the church is glorified the son is glorified the father is glorified the father has been fully exalted through the victory of christ the contention now is the church in partnership with the holy spirit so ephesians chapter 3 you will now understand verse 10 to the intent 3 verse 10 to the intent that now unto principalities and powers help me we're reading verse 10 3 verse 10 3 verse 10 to the intents that now can you see it now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by this new body he has formed called the church the manifold wisdom of God here's how Paul taught it in Rome verse 8 of Romans and verse 18 it says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us then verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God it says for creation itself was subject to vanity corruption not willingly it begins to trace the corruption the bondage of corruption that came upon creation by reason of the default of Adam and says that through the church the creation will now come into that glorious liberty of the sons our territories are waiting for the revelation of the Christ through us we are the window we are the mirror of the God that they will know listen to me Plato state the perspective of God that is revealed in this territory will be a reflection that the mirror called the church gives the territory if people continue to die prematurely for instance die prematurely for instance in this theology around your failure to explain away the possibility of God on that wise to mean God cannot move that far so all of the multifaceted dimensions of the Christ the balanced view now in arts there's something called perspective for those of you who did arts perspective means your angle of perception based on where you are standing from is that true if I ask you to capture an image or a building from a particular perspective, there are details that I don't expect to be captured because of where you are standing. So Plato State is at the mercy of the balance of the saints to see the fullness of Christ. The dimension that is missing in your territory is the dimension the body has refused to reflect. So if people are spiritual and poor, they are robbing God of an opportunity to see a dimension of him. If people are prosperous and then depraved spiritually, the fullness of Christ continues to cry for expression. And this is what we have come in this convergence to achieve. Let me give you very quickly three or four points that attempts to explain the way that the church as the body of Christ 
will reflect, reveal, and unveil the Christ. The dominion strategy of the church is not hidden. This is the zenith of the communication of the kingdom. The, the very gospel of the kingdom is an attempt to reveal the all-surpassing power of the Christ as revealed in and through the church. So there is a dimension of glory that can never be accorded the Father until the church reveals Christ in a way and manner that everyone within this territory will know that Jesus is Lord. Number one, is God blessing us? Hmm. The systems that bring glory to the Father. Number one, the first strategy given to the saints by which Christ can be revealed in our lives, our families, and a territory is the ministry of prayer. Write it down. Prayer is the number one strategy given. It's a platform that allows the revelation of the Christ to be seen within a territory. Please say prayer. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Jesus is still having his mentorship session. He's teaching the believers who would later be apostles of the Lamb. And now his discourse moves to the subject of prayer. And he's about to teach us something very interesting. Are we together? The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 and verse 1 that he spake this parable to the end that men, to the end that men ought always to pray. So prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is not for men of God. Prayer is for men. You are exempted from prayer if you are not a man. But provided you are a man carrying this material body, you are mandated to pray. So the intent of the parable So the intent of the parable And the Bible describes this judge. May you never be in a court where you have this kind of judge in Jesus' name. That a judge that does not fear God, nor regard man, you can't bribe him. You can't say you are my relative. And the Spirit of God can almost not speak to him because he doesn't have regard for God. So this is the judge we have to deal with. Sin 2 verse 3. The Bible now tells us that there was a widow. Who is a widow? One whose system of defense from this scripture has been taken away. A woman who is vulnerable, her cover has been taken from her. Now he's teaching on prayer. He wants to show us the power of prayer in revealing the Christ within a territory. And so he's contrasting a man who does not fear God and a frail widow and the widow the bible says continue to go to the judge and say avenge me my adversary next verse says for a while that means there is a time component to prayer for a while that unjust judge would not pay attention to her but then he said within himself though i do not fear god nor regard man next verse he said that um, where are we? Please go back to verse 5. Because this woman troubled me. Other versions say because of her importunity, her persistence, her fortitude to remain, she altered the judgment of a man. God could not advise him. Men could not advise him. But prayer still changed his will. This is the power of prayer here. He's teaching us how to pray. That means a territory that cannot pray cannot see God. There are possibilities that cannot be revealed within a territory corporately when men do not pray. He spake a parable encouraging a people that in their quest to see Christ revealed, men will ought always to pray. A family that does not pray will not see the revelation of the Christ. 
A businessman that does not pray will keep seeing possibilities that will never become his experience. Because the technology of manifestation is that everything is first real in the realm of the spirit and then it is transported through prayer. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no date attached to them. It takes prayer to attach time and create their manifestation. So men can pray. Samaria was under siege until a prophet came and with one decree by this time tomorrow. He was not revealing what would have happened anyway. He made it happen through the power of decrees. Are we together now? Spirit of prayer. Men and women, you do not know how cheap life can be until you master the art of praying with understanding. Not crash prayer that is born out of selfishness. Not prayer that is full of wise sayings. Oh God, is this how my life will be? That's not prayer. Are we together now? The Bible says in James chapter 5, Apostle James is teaching us something on prayer. And then he starts from verse 13. He says, is any man afflicted? So he's talking about affliction. He says, if that man is afflicted, let him pray. Not let him discuss with neighbors and relatives that will not have the power to solve his problem. It's amazing that God is the last person with problem. It's amazing that God Men ought always to pray. Just are we together? We must pray. Prayer is not for men of God. Prayer is for men. Prayer is for men. We must pray. You know, sometimes believers forget that this is Africa. We have to be honest to admit it. Let me tell you the truth. The, the operation of witchcraft and the operation of powers that be is something that we'll be joking if we try to ignore. It takes prayer to dislodge the powers of the enemy. It takes prayer to select and insist that your portion be manifested. There is nothing that is laid anywhere for you by default. Is prayer that insists on your allocation. Please understand this. The Bible tells us, please go to verse 16. Still teaching on prayer. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Then it says the effectual. Now he's telling you the kind of prayer that works. The effectual fervent prayer. Of a righteous man availeth much. Are we together now? And then verse 17 now personifies an entity. Now it's amazing how scripture works. Every time God is communicating a thought, he usually will pick in an individual that personifies that thought. In this case, he's using Elijah. That Elijah was a man who was subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly. Now, he's talking about territorial dominion. One man prays over the city of Jos. Plateau state that there be no rain. Don't you think there were other prayer warriors who prayed against him? There had to be other people who said, no, forget about that nonsense. See, let me tell you. All men are not the same. This is a very difficult revelation to get, but just try to understand what I'm saying. We are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto all. But our understanding, alongside the election of grace and our personal sacrifices, have separated us into cadres of possibilities. A man can be talking and saying something and another man's covenant can veto what you are saying. Because of an agreement you have with God and a vow he has sworn with his name on your behalf. Elijah 
Elijah secured a space where God branded his dealings with that man. If you were in Elijah's city, whatever you were praying was nonsense. It was a business between him and God for three and a half years. There were 7,000 other prophets who were being mentored. One of them should have been compassionate enough to say, Oh God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, send rain. And God said, Ah, it doesn't work that way. A man who ah, it doesn't work that way. A man who knows how their children don't you think the women would have prayed before resorting to the option of eating their children and yet samaria did not change but one man there are men truly there are men that god honors they will speak over your life and shift your climate like day and night let me speak over someone tonight in the name of jesus the son of the living god i declare that what must shift this night let it shift over your life Please sit down. Prayer. When men can pray, they can shift territories. They can shift climates. There's kidnapping going on in Joss. When I came into this city, that was the first information I got to hear. Now it's everywhere. But I got to hear that this people, they just pick people like chickens. You are moving around and they pick and call an evil amount and tell you bring 100 million bring if you have 100 million spare money will, will you be the way you are and then an evil person who wants to short change there are people who can pray and the earth by itself will look for them the police can only do so much. Do you not know that the stars fought for Deborah? Have you learned how to engage the elements of the supernatural to command victory for the saints? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven, he says, and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth thereof? Let me declare that any assassin that comes near your house a day before it, the earth will open and swallow them. Listen, prayer changes things. So, some things remain in our life because you are not serious enough to pray. Not prayer that you are browsing while you are praying. That's not prayer. Not prayer that you are doing this thing and what they do, all these things you do with your phone. That's not prayer. Serious prayer that you off your phone. Off your phone and shut the door. Hezekiah was given an evil report by a genuine prophet. Chapter 38 of Isaiah. He told him, hey, spark up your house, oh king. You will not survive this sickness. He said, you are a true prophet, but go. I know how to do business with God. And he shut the door and said, Lord, remember remember and god sent the prophet say i i don't know what you did with god but he sent me back to you to say i've changed my mind the bible says i am the lord i change it not but prayer will compel him to change his mind hear me there is no verdict that is absolute it's your prayerlessness that stamps it did you hear what i said there is no verdict you wake up from a dream and you see your funeral you wake up from a dream and see a spirit i killed your father i killed your mother you say nonsense you get up and, and pray a kind of prayer see no matter how mad a man is he doesn't enter fire by mistake a madman can pick your thing he can enter the road but he's not stupid enough to stand in the midst of fire the bible says he makes his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire whatever has killed your prayer life this night in the name of jesus fresh fire upon your altar
prayer. You pay a school fees of over 500,000 for your child and he returns with a result second to the last. That's not the issue of flogging. You lock the door. That's an evil report. There were spies that came. I mean, you can't waste my money that way. Lay your hands on that child's head and pray every devil out of that head. You don't like what I'm saying? Please believe what I'm saying. You must pray. Nobody is coming around your business. You've spent money on publicity. You've spent money buying products. You are eating your products by yourself. Don't you know everything is alive? Both the products and your customers are living things. You can connect them through prayer. You will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Your life will change. You will never be the same. You touch His grace. Your life must change. Please sit down. Let's hurry up. So number one, the first platform that allows the church to reveal Christ is prayer. Number two, are we together? The second dominion system allocated for the revelation of the life and the power of Christ by the church is called productivity. Please write it down. This is very important. Productivity. There is a dimension of the revelation of the life, the power and the grace of the Christ that is only manifested through the instrument of productivity. When God made man, Adam, he gave him the blessing and he said it this way, be fruitful. Multiply, he said. Replenish, subdue, have dominion. Productivity is very important. When believers do not make their impact known, and by extension the impact of Christ known, by their level of productivity to the sociological environment, then Christ will not be revealed. More than just praying in tongues in church, more than just falling under the anointing, we must translate the spiritual possibilities we have received to become value systems and products and services that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization. That is the birthing and the revelation of glory. The church will remain a place that looks like a nuisance to society until they can see the blessings of our praying in tongues the blessings of our word study isn't it amazing that we are full of activities from week in up and week out and it's amazing that those who bring value to the social economy of a territory are seldom christians the first manifestation of the holy spirit is not as a healer it's as the spirit of creativity bringing light out of darkness to who are the who, confusion and chaos, and the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the deep, and God said, Light be. And he saw that it was good. The first good thing recorded in Scripture came on account of light. Are we together? This is very important. The Bible says, The word became flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the begotten. Full of grace and truth. You only behold what is being manifested. We must trust God for grace. We must trust God for grace. We should see believers. The most blessed people. Not from a carnal standpoint. The most productive people in society. Should be those who are of the church. It is proof of the advantage and the value. Nobody can just come and shut a church because you will show how the people in that church are contributing to the GDP of a territory. We are not just talkatives. No. Hallelujah. 
the definition of darkness is a territory without us. We culture the moral values. We culture the advancement that you shut the church for 24 hours. A territory should go into disarray. If a territory is still normal when the church is shut, it's proof we are not doing anything. Productivity. There is a dimension of competence and excellence that must come from the church. You have a restaurant as a Christian. That's not, you, you should not be the one who opens by 12 in the afternoon and closes by 5 in the evening and believe you will lead the field. It won't work that way. We must be productive. I cast the spirit of laziness in the name of Jesus. Let me say this respectfully so and let me admit to you. Mediocrity and low level of productivity is a plague that is upon us, the middle belt. Now, I, I must say this. This is an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. We must trust God for grace. For some reason, it looks like our cultural context has found its way to make mediocrity and laziness comfortable. Consoled by the fact that vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. We must wake up. Otherwise, there will rise another Pharaoh who does not know Joseph. And the sons of the kingdom will be bent into servitude. Are we together? Laziness is one thing that both God and Satan agree that is useless. Whether you serve God or serve Satan, in any case, you cannot be lazy. So we must trust God for grace to wake up. Be productive. Are we together? Don't sell fake things, inferior things. Christians are the ones who cheat people the most. It's wrong. It should not be so. I'm praying tongues and cheat people. You, you give people things that are outdated. And not, no, 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 no. Maintain a standard of quality. The Spirit of God came upon Bezalel and it brought forth creativity. Productivity is very, very powerful. Are we still together? Hallelujah. I found a scripture that I will read for you and it blessed me so much. First Kings chapter 7. Please let's hurry up so we maximize time. First Kings chapter 7. I'll read from verse 13 and 14. Now look up please. This is the building of Solomon's temple. Let me show you the power of productivity and the power of competence. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. Tyre was the business hub of the then world. Next verse. The Bible says this Hiram was the son of a widow of the tribe of Naphtali. He said, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass. And he was what? Filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work. The Bible starts by telling us his background. A widow's son. No advantage. But his competence grew him to a point where his domain was the palace. When you serve kings, you will eat with kings. You are not productive until kings call you. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, arise, shine. For your light is come and the glory of God is risen upon you. I like to quote it from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. For darkness shall cover the earth, the Bible says, and gross darkness the people. Then it says, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles, Gentiles will come. There is a level of light that when you have, you don't look for people again. You become so compelling. They will give every excuse to be with you. Gentiles will come to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising. I was very blessed when the daughter of the man of God, you know, that little girl, 
and you can see the kinds of songs that she's singing. Imagine that this lady becomes consistent in the music ministry. By the time she's 20, she would be a global voice. And then people will come and say they are lucky. That's always what we say when we see competent people. Who is this that came from nowhere? Let me tell you, nobody comes out of nowhere. When David is, when David is in the cave of Adullam, you may not see him, but he is there. When David is at the backside killing lions and bears, you may not be there to capture it, but he is there having his track record. There is always a day in every man's life called the season of appearing. Until then you stay. Until then you walk. I'm encouraging some of us who are in ministry. Leave this thing of trying to look for open doors. Doors are not closed. It is your door that is closed. And it was closed by God to keep you in training. When the season comes, the doors open. You are in business, sit down. Promise yourself that you will never stand before your destiny helpers and have them ignore you. You will be too competent to be ignored. If you have to call the attention of men to your competence, it's proof you are not good enough. Your light should be so bright, it should be impossible to be ignored. Number three, can we hurry up? The third platform. Now, please, lend me the next 10 minutes of your attention, please, inside and outside. I want you to listen very, very carefully. I'm taking out time to preach because this is my own state. I'm pouring my heart into this thing because permit my bias. I know there are people following from around, but please, let me just do this thing. I love my state. This is plateau. I mean, <laughs> praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm sure somebody will kill chicken and give me for this. This wonderful, I'm joking, I'm joking. The third platform, please, I want you, anything that distracts you now is a spirit. Just listen to what I'm about to tell you because what I'm about to reveal is a serious issue. The third platform that allows believers to manifest the power, the life of the kingdom and reveal the Christ is called wealth. Write it down. Don't assume you know what I'm talking about. Just write it and listen to me. Wealth. This subject has been persecuted greatly. Either because of ignorance or because of the approach, especially around the Pentecostal and the charismatic circles. There has been the, the communications of wealth from a carnal and a fleshly standpoint. That, that is all about just massaging the lust of people. Are we together now? And so at the end of it, you do not have people who are kingdom driven. Their approach is simply a, a trying to create resources just to feed the flesh. Please, this is not what we are talking about here. You will never find access to the corridors of power within any sociological space if you ignore the reality of the abundance of the kingdom believers wake up the days that we live in will require people who love god and are strategic enough the subject of wealth is not about prosperity the subject of wealth is a time redemption strategy we are mandated to redeem time and one of the ways we redeem time is to sustain the economic wherewithal to stop wasting time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. It takes time to build the children to love God. And if we spend our time looking for money, we will be there looking for money while the devil looks for our children. We'll be there looking for money while the devil destroys our generation. Respectfully speaking, this is what is happening in the western world. Satan patiently grew with their children. Knowing that their fathers and their grandfathers would never bow to Baal, Satan left them and went to meet the now presidents of nations while they were 8, 10, 11, and patiently grew with that generation. Now there is a generation that does not serve the God of their fathers. We rebuke this over Joss in the name of Jesus. Look at me. Not being wealthy, is wickedness just be patient i will explain to you it's, it's not just about no car no house 
when you understand the agenda of the kingdom you understand the world of men you understand systems of dominion and government you will know that being poor is a misdeed to the revelation of the christ two scriptures number one proverbs chapter 22 we'll read verse 2 and then we'll go to verse 7 i believe that in this conference there are financial apostles in the name of jesus that god is going to be raising not people who serve bell not people who go around making noise people who understand the kingdom assignment that is tied to the supplies of the spirit proverbs 22 and verse 7 please read with me ready read want to read the rich and the poor meet together the lord is the maker of them all very interesting scripture the bible never said god made them rich or made them poor god made men they separated in themselves to become rich and poor now here's the scary verse verse 7 one to read just one more time please keep this scripture here just nigeria africa this will be the key to our dominion or the key to our slavery the bible says it is a law in the world of men that the rich will always rule over the poor and that whoever is on the side of the borrower must become slave to the lender this is a statement that has no bias and no sentiment attached to it that means when satan wants people to become slaves he doesn't make them slaves by making them slaves he makes them slaves by making them borrowers. Please listen. Listen. This is a very powerful scripture. The rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior. The rich anything will rule over the poor. There are people whose properties have been collected by wicked people. And because they do not have the economic stability to defend their cause. They lost things. I made up my mind as a minister of the gospel that I will never raise a people who are just anointed and spiritual. I believe in influence. I believe in the power of economy and supplies in kingdom advance. I'm friends to many people. I don't fight politicians. I don't fight. You touch me, both God and men will deal with you. That's a powerful revelation because in this world, there is no such thing as justice truly. You create your own. Let me, let me not get into trouble. But I want you to believe this and believe it truly. You need God and you need men. Do not fight influence. Don't see wealthy people and just bless them and as everybody is a thief, wicked people. No. There are people who have been blessed through the dignity of kingdom integrity. And you will need them. The body of Jesus is hanging on a tree. No prayer warrior could bring it down. It took a man of wealth called Joseph of Arimathea to use his influence with Caesar to bring that body down. Wealth played a role in your salvation. The tomb that Jesus was buried was not for government. It was for Joseph of Arimathea. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people, to, there are children today who have no business going to useless schools. But that's what the, the money their parents had could afford. Are we together? You go to a school where the child does not even know what he's learning. They discuss what they are learning with the teacher and the teacher is not sure. And the student is correcting the teacher and they are arguing and that ends the lecture. This is why you see someone become an adult and is unnecessarily dull. It's not that they are dull. I mean, what, that's, that's the product of the background. That you can go to a school where you are sure that they are not only giving your child secular education, but the values of the kingdom. 
a school where you have night vigil before resumption. Part of the requirements is not masters and PhDs, your spiritual stand. And the proprietor has the economic wherewithal to outsource spiritual people. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it. Please understand this. There are many men of God today who cannot pray well because of economic vicissitudes. The pastor wants to pray and is aware that they need to buy a new generator. Where will he get five million to get a mechano generator? And he goes to pray, well intentioned, and he's there for three hours, strolling around. Oh God, you called me. I'm sure of this. You see, you look, at, look at the amount of time that is being wasted in that discussion. Whereas he would have been praying for something more productive. What is wrong with God raising people to say, Pastor, please save yourself this trouble. We will commit ourselves to helping you while you commit yourself to the ministry of the word and prayer. Please don't say it does not matter. There are members who cannot listen to a teaching because their rent is due. And while they are sitting there, the landlord is at the other side and is looking at them. Are we together? And, and we say it does not matter. What, what, what do you mean it does not matter? Of course it matters. Listen. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. The only reason why Israel, God's covenant people, will go into Egypt is hunger. Genesis 42 verse 1 and 2. Don't forget this scripture for as long as you live. Please give it to us very quickly. Genesis chapter 42. Please look up. It's projected. Let's just walk with time. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, there was corn, but the problem is the location, Egypt. He said unto his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. He said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down tether and buy for us from thence that we may leave. Even a prophet would die when there is no corn. A prophet sends his future to the place of bondage because he needs corn. There are marriages that should not have happened. Is this search for corn that created those ungodly alliances? There are people like Jonah. They know where God sent them to. But because they need to stay where there is corn, they have gone out of the will of God. There are people today who should not have died. Cheap medical attention just for next to nothing. And they died like chickens. And we say, how can I have that Sharia? Remember, I'm speaking from a standpoint of love. I will never forget the day that our precious Jasmine Market was burned to ashes. As it went down, the economy of many went down. Even till today. But there's an army rising up. There's an army rising in this city. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every listen to me I say it by the spirit there will be people who will rise from this city in the spirit and the power of Nehemiah and they will repeal they will repeal the economic destiny and heritage of this city it is true some of them are politicians some of them are bankers some of them are men of God but an agency they cannot explain. They will come under the influence of it. And there will be a clarion call. The sons and daughters of the land. Both the ones who are within and afar off. There will be a convergence. And they will come and rebuild the plateau again. 
to become God's own state. Please sit down. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.